So now let's discuss why equitable trans-oriented development makes sense. Why equitable TOD? I might say, why not equitable TOD? Equitable TOD is useful for many, many people. If you are a low-income household, you benefit from having more housing options in a multimodal area, whether it's a transit-rich environment with heavy rail service or a bus-oriented area with convenient local bus service. In any case, you benefit from having more housing and more access to more jobs and services. If you're a small business, you benefit from having additional retail space to do your business and the additional traffic of people passing by your storefront. Uh, likely, you would be eligible for local grants or loans that would help you thrive and benefit the people around you. In that same vein, Equitable TOD aspires to create new jobs and also support existing jobs. Often, the most successful Equitable TOD communities include opportunities for job training and career advancement. And Equitable Transit-Oriented Development often takes special care with the public realm, helping to expand access to public open space for residents, regardless of income, to enjoy. I am particularly attracted to equitable transit-oriented development for its fearless wrestling with gentrification and displacement. One answer to why not equitable TOD may be because communities want more property tax revenue or sales tax revenue in their coffers in order to expand public services on a city-wide scale. That, no doubt, is an important objective of any redevelopment effort. However, I think including affordable housing or affordable business access in a station area not only will increase property tax revenue or sales tax revenue by nature of the redevelopment, but also will maintain its economic resilience in that station area through economic downturns. As we've seen with COVID-19, those who most often took transit were essential workers who continued to rely on that transit service and on whom many of us continue to rely. Therefore, equitable transit-oriented development is just as much an economic development strategy as traditional transit-oriented development. Equitable transit-oriented development also is a strategy to reduce vehicle miles traveled and greenhouse gas emissions. On the left side, we see a bar chart from Transform and the California Housing Partnership Corporation showing that housing and community development financed properties in California have more transit trips per day than their non-subsidized transit-oriented development or non-transit-oriented development counterparts. And that is across the board for all incomes, but especially high among extremely low-income households. On the right, we see a map from Cool Climate, which is an initiative of UC Berkeley, showing Bay Area greenhouse gas emissions. If you are familiar with the BART or AC Transit or several other transit systems in this area, you will know to associate the total greenhouse gas emissions with where the transit lines travel. Uh, there clearly is a correlation between greenhouse gas emissions and transit service. Equitable TOD also is a displacement mitigation strategy. These images uh, from TriMet show that housing value increased significantly in downtown Portland from 2001 to 2016. Unsurprisingly, knowing that higher income households do not use transit at the same rates as lower income households, that downtown area, which now in 2016 housed higher income households, had lower rates of transit service. Instead, we find that lower income households spread toward the suburbs or a suburbanization of poverty. There, we find that those low income households are still relying on transit to get by surrounding downtown. However, it is more costly for TriMet, the region's transit agency, to serve those populations. TriMet would be in a better position if those low income households were able to stay closer to the core, thus reducing the need for TriMet to extend service to benefit them. This bar chart from the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, or MBTA, shows ridership change from fiscal year 2017 through fiscal year 2021, which of course included COVID-19. In Greater Boston, like many regions in the country, we find transit ridership to drop off precipitously. No surprise there. What is interesting is that bus ridership maintained 
better than other modes. In Boston, as in Denver, as in many cities across the country, those who continued to rely on transit service, essential workers, continued to rely on bus service. Those were the bus riders before COVID, those remain the bus riders today. Therefore, you could make the argument that equitable transit-oriented development, with a particular emphasis on development near bus service, is an economic resilience strategy as well as a redevelopment strategy. Equitable TOD also supports resident health outcomes. These images from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council's health impact assessment relative to the Healthy Neighborhood Equity Fund in Boston points out many of the benefits of equitable TOD, including increased real estate values, lower health care costs, reduced vehicle miles traveled, and access to economic mobility, many of the issues I've already discussed. We see a flowchart that describes outcome-oriented pathways. So on the left, yes, we have new transit-oriented development, and the immediate impacts of that TOD are increases in transportation options, increases in housing, changes in traffic patterns, but the intermediate impacts are more nuanced and arguably more beneficial to those who enjoy TOD, uh, including access to healthy food, increase in physical activity, a reduction in vehicle miles traveled, and greater social cohesion. As a result of this investment in equitable transit-oriented development, the community has lower stress and lower incidence of mental illness, lower chronic disease, and an increase in real or perceived safety. And finally, in this chapter, consideration for healthy mobility. Uh, transit-oriented development at its core is a healthy mobility strategy. The chart on the left from Ryan Edwards at Queens College in the City University of New York shows that even moderate increases in walking reduce obesity rates. I'll leave it to your eyes to read the small text, but basically a, a brisk walk is the lowest dotted line, whereas the baseline forecast continues to accelerate at a, a high rate, almost a 55% obesity rate by 2050. Anyway, the point here is that we don't want to become WALL-E. We don't, in my opinion, we should not rely on autonomous vehicles to mindlessly travel uh, and deliver us to where we need to go. Instead, we should find ways to enhance walking and bi biking environments so that we can conveniently and healthfully continue to live our lives. Now that you are all believers in equitable transit-oriented development, let's discuss how to get there, starting with community engagement.